Hey everybody, this is Efren of Your Real Pastors, and I am here today with a review for you. And we are getting get into this. Gary, unfortunately, was not able to see this movie with me. Um, so this is something that you get to hear just from me. I was actually able to take my wife on a date on Friday night to go see this movie that we are going to be talking about. And it was great because that was kind of our Valentine's uh, date. And then today is Valentine's Day. And I find it great that I get to review this movie on this day. And uh, and the movie that we are going to be talking about today is the movie Death on the Nile. Now, this movie um, is actually centered around love and what love can do to a person and the things, the links that people will go through because of love. And I think, again, for this coming out on Valentine's Day weekend... You know, even me putting this out today on Valentine's Day and this movie being centered around love, it actually makes a whole lot of sense that this ended up happening. And this is the movie that is a sequel to the movie Murder on the Orient Express. Now, I also understand that this is a series of books and they made older movies of it, um, things like that. I have not read or seen those other movies. I just know they exist. And um, But this is a follow-up to that movie. And honestly, I quite enjoyed Murder on the Orient Express. I really do like whodunit type of movies and murder mysteries and things like that because I love to try to figure it out. I am a person who grew up playing Clue and things like that, just because I love this kind of thing, like trying to figure out who did it and what's going on. And uh, and this movie was actually directed by Kenneth Branagh, who also star, I think I said his name right, who also stars in this movie as the detective, uh, the smartest, the best detective in the entire world. And uh, and if you recognized him and something else, he was also in Tenet. He was the main bad guy in Tenet, and uh, I put that together halfway through this movie. Um, but hey, but it was really cool, and... Uh, so I thought, uh, so this is directed by him and it's something that he enjoys doing and you can tell he enjoys playing his character as well. Um, so a couple good things about this is one, as you can see by the picture here, it has a stellar cast uh, and not everyone on here necessarily, I knew who they were before this movie, but everyone on here that you do know or you didn't know did a great job. Gal Gadot, Latita Wright, Army Hammer, um, Russell Brand and others. I mean, this this was a great, great cast. Everyone did a great job with their roles. Um, another thing I liked is that everyone did kind of like ham it up, right? Like where to where it felt very noir and classic, like classic film, and uh, and it had a, a little bit, like I said, just kind of ham things up. Like some things were a little over the top, and you can tell they they did that on purpose. It's like people wouldn't really act this way but it was fun and it fit in the world that they were in everybody was a little extra if you will and so that is something that I enjoyed uh, quite a bit about it and then of course this whole setup that they did for this movie it was kind of funny because with the first one Murder on the Orient Express like you get to the murder and him having to try to solve it way like way into the movie like early on to the movie this movie uh, you know it takes a little bit slower pace but what it does well that I really liked is that it took a large portion of the beginning of it to set up each character, where they came from, why they're there, why they're a part of this movie, why they're on this boat, on this cruise that's going down the Nile River. And what they do that I thought was very interesting is they went ahead and set up for you everybody's motives and how everybody could have a reason to murder. And, and I don't know, maybe if you haven't seen the trailer, the trailer tells you who the one, who's the person that gets murdered and who he needs to like figure out who done it. If you haven't seen the trailer, check that out and then you know who it is. So that's why I'm kind of not saying who it is now. Um, because this is one that because of COVID and moving things around, you might have forgotten or might have missed out. So I'm not going to say too much about that. But I did like how they set up like, okay, I can see how every single person is a suspect. And so what you had to do to try to figure out who are the culprit who the culprit is, then you, then you had to be going through and really trying to think, okay, who could have actually pulled this murder off? And who could have done it? You know, was it one person? Was it multiple people? Like who was, like you had to try to really figure out and see how it all worked. And that was something that I liked because normally with these kind of movies and most movies, honestly, with that, that try to play with the mind and try to get you to think, what ends up happening is I, I do, me personally, I get to figure it out a lot sooner than most people. And sometimes that is to a movie's detriment because if the movie's too long, then it just feels like, okay, can we just get to the point? Because it's obvious what you're doing, where you're going. It's obvious who had done it. Um, but this one didn't feel that way because where it spent probably a good half the movie, maybe, I don't know if it was that long, but where they spent a good time trying to show you, hey, this is how every single person uh, ha had some kind of beef with the person who was being murdered, where they would have the motive 
to kill them, you're, you're learning a lot about the characters, and then you're realizing, man, this is going to be a little bit harder. So you're, you're really trying to study everybody before it happens, which I thought was a very interesting take on it. And, and again, I haven't seen or read the old, the old movies or read the old books, so maybe that's how they did it. If they did, I think that's great, and I think it's great they kept it here. If they didn't, I'm glad they added that to this. I thought that was really, really good. And so as you see, you know, this, this, uh, this cast here... And everybody was really awesome. And then, of course, to me, what held it all together, it wouldn't have worked at all uh, if if he didn't have the detective being who it was. And when you have in Kenneth Broad and I like, I mean, look at him like he took this role very seriously. He did it very well. He was kind of not necessarily the glue that held this movie together, but you can tell he had a shoulder most of it. And and he had to be the one to to bring logic and sense into the whole thing. And he actually had some great funny lines as well. Um, but for the man who is, is directing and starring and he helped write the screenplay, um, this is something that you can tell he was very involved and very passionate about this story. And, uh, and I haven't looked into it, so I'm assuming that he knew these stories before. He loved them, so he just wanted to bring them back to life for a new generation, which he has done for me. And I have, I like I said, I like the first one. And, uh, and you're hearing my thoughts here. I'm saying a lot of good things about this one. But he is the one that really holds this, this thing together, and he really shoulders this whole thing. And so I thought he did a great job. He's a superb actor. If you've seen him in Tenet, and I've honestly, I probably have seen him in other things and just didn't realize it. But uh, he's a superb actor. He does a great job. And uh, just being able to see him you know be this character be the detective and then he is so passionate and the other thing that he that goes into this is I love how with his character in the first one you just see that he's kind of this like I guess methodical thinker he's super smart but awkward and uh, you know he knows like he has his little quirks and stuff and so he just kind of pushes himself away from people but here you get to hear a little bit more of his backstory of why he is the way he is you get to see um, uh, his heart and why uh, with things that have happened in his past so you get to dive even to his character even more and then the thing is everything that happens that in this movie especially with his backstory none of it is wasted none of it of all it, at all is wasted and a big thing that happened in the movie is again like I said earlier is how love can affect you and how love can make people do crazy things how love can make people take risk or have more faith or have less faith and have more distrust like the things that love can do to a person and we really see that with him and what happens with him in his story and why he's the way he is now and why he conducts his, himself in a way that he continues to conduct himself throughout this movie. So I thought that was really, really great. And, uh, and you know, kudos to him and, and his screenplay and things and how he wrote this. And, and again, it just, to me, a lot of that stuff was just so, so good. And so that was something that I really enjoyed him. And, and every time he was on screen, man, like, it didn't matter if it, was, if it was Gal Gadot, I think that's how you say her name, or Army Hammer, anybody. If he was on screen with those people, you can tell, like, he was the one in charge. You can tell that he was the one stealing that scene every single time. Everybody else had their time to shine in different aspects of the movie, and they did shine. But if he was on screen with them, forget it. He took the cake, and he was amazing, and that was something that I just really, really liked and appreciated. And again, this is something that it would be hard to do, right? I mean, when you're looking at this cast, it's hard to think like, man, this guy, he's really stealing the show, but he did. And he did a fantastic job, and uh, and this is something I you had these beautiful like scenes um, that that they had like throughout. I mean, again, you're you're sitting on the Nile River, you're seeing the pyramids, and you know they kind of do a little bit of hopping around at uh, the beginning. You starting to see different people, and, um, and and again, you see how shots like this where everybody's around, and again, this is one of those shots where they they're starting to set up like all these people are around. Even you can see in these pictures, not everyone is like too thrilled to be there and you're seeing what's uh that they're all kind of like okay like something's going down and this specific shot you know they're looking at uh something someone and you know again that's causing some of this so there's just a lot um excuse me there's a lot going on here uh but again but even if this thing like with Kenneth Branagh off to the side he still again st stole this scene he, the other great things happened in this scene but with him present, he did a great job. And, and again, even assembling this cast, I thought it was great. Um, so again, but then the story, the character development, and then the whodunit aspect was great. And then honestly, it did have a very good, satisfying ending, which I did appreciate a lot. I liked how it panned out, and I thought that was great. Um, so those are just a lot of things that were 
really good about this movie. A lot of things that I really liked, and I don't want to say too much more because if I keep saying the things that I like about it, I might give things away. I've been I'm doing trying to do a, a real good job of not spoiling this because if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, uh, movies like this, like like Knives Out, is another one. Like you need to be able to go in with as little information as possible. So you can try to figure it out on yourself uh, on your own and by yourself um so but yeah but this is a lot of good stuff now a couple of things that i thought didn't work so much per se um one of them was uh the length of the movie like i know this is might be sound kind of weird because i liked how they set everything up so you can get to know everyone you get a lot of character development but where but that's where you kind of feel the length is because you feel like I mean, we're taking a little while to get to the actual murder for him to be a detective and then once the murder happens it feels like the movie just gets put into fast forward because now he needs to figure it out and figure it out really fast because you hear about this time frame that happens. And, and so he's like, I got to do this fast. I mean, again, they're on a cruise ship, so you can kind of figure some of that time constraints out. And so he's on there and he's got to figure everything out. So it seems like, you know, you had this long like intro to everything again, which was good. But then because of that, it felt like the rest of the movie, when you're actually trying to figure out the mystery, it felt like it just got really sped up and then it just felt like oh, boom and then you're done um so that's that's what it just kind of felt weird it just felt like um it almost felt like two different like paces it just it was it was two different paced movies and, and i get and the thing is it made sense and i felt it a little bit uh and, and honestly and i think it might it's probably more of a nitpick of mine um i i just would like to have seen a little bit more detective work maybe understand his mindset a little bit behind it and, and maybe walk with uh Pierre, i guess is how you say his name. i don't know how to say his name but the, the character's name but seeing his mindset and seeing him work a little bit more on the detective side but the thing is if you're a person who prefers more the character development and then seeing them just kind of put all that together to work through things pretty fast then this will work for you and it will and it'll be great because they did a lot of that in it uh, like i already talked about so that to me was one thing that just felt a little weird. Uh, and another thing, you know, at, you know, with again, with real passage, we talk about this. There were some things in it that um, that was a little bit over the top that, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, with my wife and there was uh, a, a couple of scenes uh, of, like there was nothing like overtly like like there was like there's no nudity or anything like that in this movie. But there were some scenes that would just made you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Right. And um, and it was to me, it was like. You could have shown that, but not like in such extensive length, I guess. Like, uh, for instance, like there's this you know, scene early on in the movie where this couple is dancing and they're dancing like pretty provocatively. And, um, and it's one of those things where it's like, OK, like you might want to see you might see some of that and you kind of think, OK, like, OK, they're dancing. They're really into each other. Um, but then it just went on like for so long. And I was just like, why is this still going on? So there was just certain things like that. Where I was like, okay, like you made your point. Like, why are we still like two minutes into this and this is still happening? Um, so it just felt like certain aspects of it, they they made longer for, for no reason. And it kind of didn't make sense to me. Um, you know, and again, that whole even pacing thing, like I was just talking about, some of that was able, what was like kind of like, well, it was we were kind of feel weird and there's you know kind of another scene that kind of did the same thing and it was like okay like we get it let's let's kind of get to the point let's move things on along a little bit so that's probably my biggest issue with this is that there's a lot of uh pacing issues or certain choices where i thought uh, i don't see where this is necessary um with some of the character stuff it, although it was good again it just seemed like a little overdone but maybe that was part of them them hamming things up like i said where they wanted to to overdo this make it feel more like that classic classic film classic hollywood noir kind of stuff where things were hammed up a little bit maybe that's what they were going for if it was they nailed it um i just personally didn't care for some of that stuff um and and again just the pacing of how things you know developed and stuff but the thing is is like overall this was a pretty good movie and then you know just even talking again just talking about like looking at things from again real pastors a pastor perspective just this idea of of what things people would do for love uh, i thought that was really really interesting um especially from a pastor perspective like the things we've already seen you know that happens because of love and uh, and what what you know what christ has done for us like this is something that we're you know that we believe and so it, that's that whole aspect is like man like we do like believe in the power of love and what love can do and what people would do for it again very very powerful stuff so i thought it was great um and that's why i thought it was great hey you're doing this around 
Valentine's Day weekend. Maybe it's not the, I mean, it's not the most romantic movie, obviously, um, but but that theme being the theme that that holds this whole plot and story together and the characters together. I mean, there's so much different love interest and things going on and uh, throughout this movie that was great with all the characters. Um, so, so again, that, that a lot of that stuff was really good. Um, you know, this is one, again, a, a, we like to do a dad perspective. Uh, again, with some of the stuff that seemed like the dancing and stuff was kind of like, again, they don't show nothing, but it was a little over the top. It was a little over long. Uh, you know, maybe just, you know, pay attention to some of that. I mean, it's PG-13 for a reason. There's other stuff that happens. There's a little bit of language in it, things like that. So just keep those things in mind when you're thinking of of, of your kids and things like that. I mean, I would stick close to that PG-13, but you know your kids. Um, but this is, uh, again, a movie that, that, was, that was well done and I thought was pretty good. And honestly, a breath of fresh air. Um, because again, no, we've had it. This, this is a sequel to a movie, but I've been enjoying these movies because it is like, I'll be honest, you guys know, I love my comic book movies and big action sets and stuff. Um, things like that. I love those things, but man, it's nice to be able to see a different kind of movie every once in a while, especially since we're so saturated with everything else. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's nice. And so this one was really, really good. And I really did appreciate it. So, uh, going now wrap, trying to wrap things up here. I know I've been talking quite a bit about this movie is now it's time to review it and to really think like, you know, what's, what's this? And honestly, I've been going back and forth with, um, with what I should rate this movie. Uh, there's a lot that I liked about it. I did have some nitpicks, um, but I was trying to figure out like, you know, what would be a, a, a good, uh, rating for this. And as I am sitting here thinking about it, so death on the Nile as I, as I watch it, this is one that, that I probably will have on the shelf um, and be able to go back and revisit because I like the whodunit. I like the, the, love, the, how the love being threaded throughout the entire story, the character development. I did like the way they handle a lot of things, even though I have some pacing issues, things like that. But overall, I did enjoy this movie, and I thought this was, this was a good movie, and it's a good one uh, to check out. So I am uh, going to have to rate this. Um, of what? Maybe it popped up. There we go. It popped up. All right, four out of five Hail Marys. This was a good movie. I liked it a lot. I thought it was great. I thought a lot of it. Um, like I said, with everything I already said, I thought this was really good. Um, it's a, not a masterpiece by by any means. Again, there's a lot still to not like about it. But this is one that it was. It was. It was a lot of fun. It gave you exactly what you expected out of it. Again, some pacing issues, maybe a couple plot holes here and there, some character choices that were a little questionable, but. Uh, but you know, when I went back and forth between a three and a four, I just thought, you know, a three is for movies that are just okay. And I did not think this movie was just okay. I thought this was a great movie and I had a lot of fun. I thought it was good. I highly recommend to go see this movie, especially if you love murder mysteries. If you love whodunit, I think you will really like this movie. Um, if you, this isn't your, if that isn't your cup of tea, you probably won't like it, uh, because it requires thinking and trying to get into people's heads and stuff. But if you like these kind of movies, you will like them. I thought it was great. So I definitely recommend it. Four out of five Hail Marys. And I would love to know if you guys have seen this movie yet. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and uh, like this video and just continue the conversation with us. We love to hear your thoughts on this. And we catch you guys next time. See everybody.